Hello, my name is John Neal. I'm a professional chalkboard artist and sign writer. And this is my second DVD, and I'm going to show you some new lettering techniques. I'll briefly go over some of the other work in the first DVD, but we'll explore some more areas of lettering as well. I will be covering details of pens that I use, and indeed brushes as well. And it's very common to use white or just one colour, and there's various techniques for that. There's also borders around the boards that we can look at. There's a number of designs for those, which are very interesting, and also pictures and little illustrations. I'm going to give you a full demonstration of how I did this board, including this reflection effect, which is really quite easy to do, in fact. We'll also cover a few other things, like posters and big sheets and maybe murals as well. I'm going to tell you about the pens and the markers that I use, including the crayons and brushes as well. Now, the pencil crayon is a, a first marker that I use for marking on the board, and generally it makes a mark that you can't really see, so it doesn't matter if you can't get it off. And then the pens come in various sizes, and there are even some, like this one, which is very uh, small, and it's a square-ended calligraphy pen. There are ordinary pens which are quite pointed and rounded, and then they go slightly larger. This is a, quite a common pen for regular small lettering. And this one I use very often. It's a 50mm pen. These are Posterman pens, and they even make them biggie size, which are very good for big posters and windows. In the last DVD, I reviewed some of the capital letters, and I'm going to do all the rest of the alphabet this time. The first few letters I've done before, so I'll quickly go over them now. Don't forget you have to hold the pen so that mark becomes thin and that one thick. And then you get some wonderful shapes. And these letters I've covered before. Right, the letter G is, of course, part of an O shape. As it flows around, you get this lovely thick and thin effect, and the Romans would have designed it looking very much like that, or very similar. And I'll show you a flourish on each of these, so it would go rather like that. Notice here, you need to get the pen to sit on the board properly. Right, the letter H is mostly thick down, and a thinner one slightly across. But make sure that you do each of the letters from the top. So the H here with a flourish... Now the letter I is very similar, and the serifs which I've talked about in the past would go there and there. So you don't, if you're going to put serifs on, do, but an I on its own is just that. Now the letter J, the Romans didn't have a letter J, so we're in fact inventing this. Mostly it's that, and again, it doesn't have a top on it really, but people do put one on so it looks like that. And you can flourish that. Maybe like that. The letter K, lovely letter, it sort of sits nicely. Like that, it looks like it's about to fall over, so if we put this in as a support, it makes a nice solid looking letter. And likewise, we can put a flourish on it. Now, the letter L is very nice because it's a very straightforward line down. That's the thick part. And the stroke of the L comes across there, and the serifs would go there, if to put on, and a very nice serif could go just there. The letter M is interesting because it ought to be upright on the two sides, rather than the W, which I'll come to later. That then goes thick, and that one thin, and we can flourish that by doing that maybe. Letter N is important because it doesn't quite follow the same rules. That upright and that one would be quite thin. Then the diagonal is the thick one. And this is most important that the serifs only go halfway across there, all the way across there, and all the way across, and not at the bottom. You might see it done. In my book, it's a mistake. Now you can really make the N 
sit up in a sort of a modernistic way like that and doing a, a very nice flourish with it as well. The letter O again start at the top and go down on both strokes and you'll end up with the side of the letter being thicker than the top. And of course a Q just takes the tail off there. The letter P we can do and include the letter R as well which is very similar. I like to do the body of it nice and big so thick there down to there and the serif would go there and there. And you can turn that into a letter R by putting the tail here either down there or over the top. The Romans originally did one like that but we might also like to do one like that. The letter S. Now this is a very tricky one because it sort of turns in on itself. So if we do that as an S we need to notice that the thinnest part of the letter is there, top and bottom, so the middle bit goes thick, and it takes a bit of practice to get this right. So the thickest part of the letter is there. The serifs would just sort of slightly slope inwards, and the bottom of the S is slightly bigger, so it tapers nicely and sits down on the line. I'll just do that once more. Thin there, thin is there, so you can thicken the middle up, get that swoop from the top to the bottom. The letter T, I'm going to do that thin there. That's the thicker part. Again, the serifs there. You might want to just send those serifs slightly off that way. T, U. Now then, you might think that's a thick, and this side is the thin. So there's the serifs. And V, like an upside down A, thick, and thin with serifs there and there. Now the Romans didn't have a V or a W, I can't remember which, so the W would go here and that's the thick part, thin, then thick, and then thin, and the serifs go across there. You notice that it's not an upside down M, they actually sit slightly wide. Here is the V, and an X will be thick that way down from the way the pen is held. There's thin, serifs across all of them. Now then, the Y, here's a question. Is that going to be thick or thin? Answer, thick. And I often like to just tail that down. And the Z, I go thin across there and thick down that stroke with serifs maybe there and there. Let me show you how you can use just one colour, in this case white, with lots of different effects, including shading and a reflection effect. Right, so I'm using this biggie pen and getting a good angle there. And don't worry if it goes on a bit thin to start with. Now H is quite a wide letter, so we'll just keep that in. I'm going to put the word white, I-T-E, so there's I, T can go there. And for this shadow effect, I've chosen letters which are flat at the bottom. Now this white isn't quite solid yet, but with the second coat, it starts to jump into life. And I'm putting a white, extra white on there, on the right hand side, as if a light was coming from this direction. Do that all the way across and try and get, we need white right at the bottom. Don't worry if that's a mess at the moment, it'll come right soon. So a nice solid white on the top and the right hand part of the letters. And straight away it's got some three dimensional effect. Right, with a small white, I'll just tidy up the edges here. Get those top.
tops. It's quite easy to make a reflection from this. We just need to put white at the bottom and then smudge down the letters. The next stage is to put a black line across the bottom here so they sit nicely on the surface. And finally, this surface, which is the reflection of the letters down, we need to now give an impression of the surface of some sort of icy reflective surface. So I need to get the tip of the pen, but on its edge, and go right across and bring it towards me, like this. And the further effect of smudging, which I've shown before, which is very effective, just imagine that there was a little shadow there. We flick it down and make a mark on the left-hand side and it very effectively. And inside there, you would imagine it would be quite dark in that crevice there, and maybe at the bottoms here. The pens are very effective to make thicks and thins, but only really when they're new. So if we use a brush with a square end, they're very, very effective. There's a thicker one and this thinner one. I'm going to use this one. Now what we need to do is milk the ink with a bit of a squeeze and a push onto a dish. And then we can load the brush, get it fully loaded and the ink is just very, very good at covering the board. As with the pen, we need to hold it constantly at that angle, so it's thin that way and thick that way. But the effect you can get with the brush is really fantastic. I'll, wa I'll write the word brush. You'll notice when the brush hits the board, you can create a little serif, and when you bring it off, you get a lovely mark. Same with the S, you get that lovely, lovely sweeping shape. I think with a capital R, you could see the same. Right, this brush is called a rigger. It's a long haired brush, and uh, if we load that, it almost seems to want to follow a curved shape rather nicely. You have to hold it quite upright against the surface. Okay. So if we take this line here with this brush, we can keep it quite upright and let the brush do the work. And likewise, over here. Maybe if we can fill this space with something as well. I'd like to show you now how the ink from these pens, these Posterman pens, works on the glass really well. It'll stay on the glass for quite a long time, it won't wash off in the rain, and yet you can rub it off with some kitchen cleaner. But I'm going to use this really wide pen. 
They're really good fun for using on glass. The message I've got to do here is Easter. Open all day, Easter day, and order your flowers. Here we go. Right, now a dark green for shadow. Right, a little highlight down here. And also down here the bottom left hand corners. With the same white pen I'm going to write a top message, get ready for Easter. So get ready for, in a flowing sort of style. Now this green, dark green, I'm going to put, we're open. I'm going to put some tulips on now. The red and the green will contrast nicely against these yellows. So a dark green, a light green, and the red. Just something to sit the whole picture down on across here. There is a bit of space here, so I'm going to put a picture in, and let's put a butterfly. Now I'm going to show how we might draw some pictures. They don't have to be too complex, but there's one or two principles to get it right. So let's put the word dine here across the top. I'll do it with a brush. So I'm going to put a glass here, a plate of food there, and then it always is a good idea to sit these on something. So I'll make a table, a tablecloth. Let's just take that glass to there. Just roughly mark out where we're going to go. Now, the glass, let's start with that. We need to do this in a, a few stages. First of all, we've got to do the contents of the glass. So I'm going to use yellow and make it a glass of wine. And we've got to try and get the, the drawing, pretty good really, but here we go. Let's just smudge all that in a bit. Now the contents of the glass, 
might look like that. And then the surface of that liquid has got to be lighter. And if it bleeds in with the white, that's okay. Then all we need to do is put the outline of the glass top and the best bit next is to put the reflection on the surface of the glass and then we can black that little piece out uh, just to tidy it up and to help it on its way I would just put a few more reflections in there and there's probably a little black nick under there Now I'm going to do a fried fish here, so let's... You need to do look at these things and get some of the shapes right. They're a bit wobbly on the top there, the texture of the batter. But they do have a bit of yellow thrown in as well. Now put the main colours down first, and then we'll put some highlights and black on as well. And the chips will start to go around here. Now orange, yellow, very nice colours. But if you think of the colour circle, then green would be most appropriate for some of the shapes here. Some mushy peas. The light that comes on is always useful to put. Helps pick things up and maybe some texture across here, across this fish. And you could do almost every chip as well. It doesn't take too long to do. And we'll just and then possibly go to this green and add a bit more. We'll sit this on a plate, so we'll just have a think where it's going to go. Now let's make it look nice and hot, so do some steamy marks coming off here. And we need to sit both the glass and the dish on something, so get the perspective nice and sharp. and take some lines as if on a tablecloth. That's the middle. The other lettering projects that we can do are some homemade uh, banners on big sheets of cloth like this, which are not too expensive. And there's also work on walls called murals. And if you project from a computer onto the wall any image that you can find, draw around it, and then you can fill it in with the pens, or indeed acrylic pens with a brush. So, here we go. Here we go with a homemade banner, Poor Old John, 60 this year.
right there is a few kinks in the cloth here but we all have that problem it's okay now I'm going to put a shadow on this time with blue Now calligraphy is more akin to handwriting than poster lettering or large lettering. And I love doing this work. It's on a calico cloth, uh, but this time I'm not using the inks. I'm in fact using a watercolour paint, quite watered down, and a brush. And the brush catches onto the calico really, really well. And this is a, a whole example of what I've done. You can use different colours and slightly different brushes too. Just write a few words for you using this brush, well loaded brush, and it's a sepia watercolour. So if I put calligraphy on canvas. I'm going to use this rigger brush to do some fine lines and the drag on the canvas is wonderful and just to let the brush do its own work you have to hold it fairly upright vertical and just let it go on its own Right, let me pull all these techniques together and I'll just use these few pens and pencils here. The pencil is very important to mark everything out. And I'll use the brush for a nice stroke across the top. And then I'll show you also how we can make some open letters and smudge some colour into it quite effectively. Thank you. 
The word art is overlapped to make it look a little cartoon-like and that's a good contrast between this formal chalkboard word and the more done in a brush. What we must do here is organise the overlap and I always make it that this one is overlapping this one which is then overlapping this. So we need to go round the letter A to make it stand in front of the R and then the R has got to stand in front of the letter T so we need to go round the letter R to stand it forward of the T. And if there are any of the parts which need tidying up it is important to get these good and sharp. And then I can put red in the gaps. And again we can smudge it in. So if we put it, and don't worry about it not going on properly because we're going to go over the white again anyway. So here's the red going on here. the spaces, the main letters, and let's just these raggedy edges around the red don't matter because I'm going to go over the whole lot again for a final touch of white. But we've got to make sure that the red is good and dry. It's even possible to spray the red colour with some clear varnish if you want. That will stop it running. and loose which sets against the others quite nicely. One of the last things to do now is to put a pen here and a mark going across so I'm going to put it in red to start with and get a good perspective so as the pen comes towards me it gets slightly bigger. So let's do that and mark it in white as well. If there's a run it doesn't matter let's leave that there. Let's make the pen swoop her way down here under and over the letters. I must get this dry before I go over this red and white, so one way is to use a simple hairdryer. Right, with the small white, I'm just going to pick out the highlights here. Now the inside will go lighter there. And let's put a heart there. What we must do now is decide whether this red is going to go under or over the letters. So here I'm going to make it go over there. And a black outline will help. And if it's going to go under, then we've got to get rid of the red. Just touch it on so you don't rub it up. And then maybe put a black on there. So it really looks like it's going under and over. Here I'll go over and then we'll go under. And that is under two. We'll wait for that to dry and make it very, very white. Zig Postman pens are available from a company called BHMA, a company in Cambridge in England. And you can find their website very, very useful indeed. 
Okay, we've covered quite a lot here. The whole of the alphabet, don't forget one or two of these letters need to be carefully looked at, the N and the S for instance. And then we did some work on just white and the shadow effect and the reflection. And also the use of the brush, which I really like. That's really good fun. We've also then did some work on pictures that you can do and some more brush work. So there we have it. And of course, there were the other projects that we have, which were the calligraphy and the working on big sheets of cloth for your own personal posters. And don't forget, you could do work on walls as well. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very much indeed.